today I'm joined by Eric Schinniger. Uh, folks in Kentucky may recognize Eric from some recent work he's done with districts and uh, a cohort of principals in the state. Um, others are going to know him from his books focused on uh, digital leadership and obviously uh, social media presence. Um, he's a former high school principal in New Jersey and currently works for the International Center for Le Leadership and Education, where, Eric, you spend a ton of time coaching, uh, keynoting and, um, you know, getting in the classrooms in a lot of districts uh, now at this point around the globe. So, Eric, thanks for uh, taking a few minutes to talk with us today about coaching. And you've obviously done some extensive work here. Um, and so could you share maybe what you've seen um you know, through your travels in different districts and, and different countries, what seems to be the fundamentals maybe of great coaching. Yeah, and, uh, it's great to be here, Ben. And, you know, when we think about coaching, you know, automatically we go to things like sports and, and we think, but when you look at it, coaching is teaching. But what many people don't realize is it's really grounded in a vast research base. You know, when you look at the research curated by the Wallace Foundation, and that of Linda Darling Hammond out of Stanford University, you know, job embedded, ongoing professional learning is what actually leads to results in student outcomes. And when you think about what a great coach does in education, you know, great coaches ask lots of questions. They don't claim to have all the answers. They ask questions to really dive deep into you know, why are you doing it that way? How might you do it better? And what will tell you if you're successful? Great coaches listen intently. You know, it, it isn't just about, you know, spitting out and dictating. You must do this, this, and this. It's about listening and processing, reflecting. Great coaches are non-judgmental. They align ideas to both research and evidence. But I think one of the greatest attributes of an effective coach is how he or she models what's expected. And, and I think that's, you know, when you think when I coached football, ice hockey and lacrosse, you know, it was all about modeling and then giving this, uh, my students, my players, the opportunity to go and apply, you know, and finally, you know, great coaches provide honest feedback. They create a safe environment that encourages conversation and they utilize tons of positive reinforcement. So in that little monologue were, if you're counting, eight specific elements of effective coaching. Eric, I appreciate you sharing that. I know you and I have talked a little bit about that before, and we've worked with some principals even in Kentucky through some of those uh, coaching fundamentals. And you mentioned really feedback, and I, I kind of wanted to, to hit on that just for a second. You know, um, the digital learning team that I'm on at KDE, we spent the last few months gathering up some resources, uh, pulling, them, pulling them together. And we really know that, you know, at the heart of, you know, really effective, you know, digital learning experiences for students is effective coaching. And one of the pieces that we can tend to maybe neglect or maybe we just don't know how to go about it is the feedback piece, that feedback loop. So, you know, if you had a piece of advice for administrators in Kentucky that may be watching this video, getting ready to go through some of our coaching plus models and thinking about feedback, what's, what's maybe something that they should, maybe the one thing they could tackle this year um, that would kind of, you know, fulfill that piece and move their staff forward. Yeah, and it's a great question. And, you know, in my work with schools here in the United States and all over the world, both virtually and face to face, you know, my goal is to not tell people what to do, but get them to think about, you know, what they do and how they might do it differently. And, you know, there's a difference between feedback and criticism. You know, if I'm going to criticize you, I'm going to say, Ben, you're awful. However, feedback would be, hey, Ben, you know, you, I saw this practice put into action, and here's how you might consider doing it differently and why. What do you think? And, you know, I, I feel that, you know, I've had a great deal of success helping schools and districts transform teaching and learning and leadership because the feedback is not about the – the giver, it is about the receiver. So as we look at six things that I try to model and apply every single time I'm giving, whether it's individual school or district feedback is to facilitate it with sincerity, to make it as practical and specific as possible so that it can be used the very next day, that it is, you know, delivered in a timely manner. 
that the conversation is a dialogue uh, where it's you know asking questions piece from before or as opposed to a monologue me just telling you what you should be doing differently doesn't you know really work uh, folk, uh, great feedback focuses on positive delivery and also in this day and age you know those that really understand feedback loops and how it can have an impact understand that there are different mediums or media that we can use to engage someone in that feedback, whether it's face-to-face, -face, a phone call, email, Voxer, uh, you know, a little post-it note, doesn't matter. But finding that right medium because different mediums and media work for different people. Absolutely, Eric. I appreciate your uh, your insight on that for sure. And here's what folks are going to see inside Coaching Plus. Inside Module 1 uh, is a video about and the, and the principal goes into a feedback process that she helped develop after some conversations with you. And so it's a great, it's a great kind of uh, example of, ex of what you're talking about. And I think principals, uh, building leaders, even it's, it, it, aspiring um, leaders in our state will be able to pick up on that and, and I mean, institute that right now and something they can carry into this year immediately. So Eric, man, I always appreciate your time uh, and your work with Kentucky and around uh, the globe. And so I think you'll be back with us again uh, this year. So we're looking forward to your work with some uh, a different group of principals. But uh, man, thanks so much for being with us today. My honor for being able to share my thoughts. Thanks, Ben.